acknowledge the fact that they knew it was coming, but they did nothing about it because they didn't want to upset the tourist industry. And spend but they don't, need a, they don't need a system. They had it out there. They knew it was coming, and they wouldn't use it. Right. And now they have no tourist industry. So really, it wasn't that God caused this horrible tsunami to hit. It's the evil greed of man refused to set up a warning system, so instead of people running, they went down into the water. Well, you know what? Their excuse for not sounding the alarms on it coming was the fact that they didn't want a lawsuit in case it didn't from the tourist industry, because now the tourists would have left, and they didn't want a lawsuit from the tourist industry. Well, now look at what they've set themselves up for. Uh, now that they've opened up their mouth and let out the can of worms, people can sue them for refusing to do their jobs. That's right, and Coffee Co Annan, the head of the Luciferic United Nations, he was actually screaming and complaining that the United States isn't giving enough money for aid for these disaster victims when he himself is the reason no one was warned. <laughs> That's amazing. He has the blood of at least 100,000 people on his head, and he's still blaming America. You know, well, America's an easy scapegoat because you know what it is. Because... Uh, First of all, I don't think there's too many too many countries, uh, the superpowers that are operating in, in, in the in the black. I mean, everybody's in debt. Everybody's in the red, right? Right. And, and one of the things that nobody's talking about is the fact that we have no real money to give anyone to begin with, uh, because our debt is in the tune of thirty-seven trillion dollars. So that's like you saying or me saying, okay, my bank account is minus three hundred dollars, but I'm going to give you five hundred. <laughs> Uh, you know, how do they do this? We're in debt, and here we're pledging money. We're pledging money out. $300 billion. Yeah, and the, and the whole thing about all this relief and people are looking for what could have been the motivation if this tsunami and these earthquakes were actually man-made caused by our own earthquake weapons that we have. And you talked about God sitting in a control room and with the button pushers. That's literally what they can do in NORAD today, just sit there and press, look, let's have an earthquake over here in India. Well, whether, whether man is causing these or, or man's greed refused to set up warning systems. The point is, you have to blame man for this. You can't blame God. Yeah. Well, well I want to get off off of that because, you know, the whole thing with this whole thing, if it's man-made, if it was a man-made disaster, is the fact that if we give, okay, the United States has has, has pledged three hundred and fifty million, which they have to now borrow from the international banking establishment. Which means we're further in debt now. We go from 37 trillion to 37 trillion 350 million. That's more interest that the that the international banking community is going to collect off of us now. We keep piling up the interest. We can't even touch the debt that we owe them. And every time the United States says, "Oh, we're going to give Africa 10 million for AIDS research, even though the ones who created AIDS to begin with and tried it out on your people to see if it actually worked," uh, we're going to we're going to pledge 10 million. And it creates more debt. And so now we're paying all this buku money in debt because we don't have the money to give them. Sure. And, you know, I wanted to quote this quote. It was a classic. Sherry? Yeah. You have Dean on the phone when you're ready. Okay, I want to quote this quote real quick from the classic idiot in the U.N. And this is uh, the Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Jan Eglund, uh, who suggests that the United States and other Western nations uh, were being stingy with relief funds, saying they would be more available if taxes were raised. And then he goes on to say, he says, there are several donors who are less generous than before in a growing world economy, he said, adding that politicians in the United States and Europe believe that they are really burdening the taxpayers too much and the taxpayers want to give less. It's not true, he says. They want to give more. We've got this guy in the, in the U.N. stating that we want to raise our taxes, that we're more than willing to raise our taxes. Yeah, well, let him raise his taxes. Yeah, first. let, let him take like it out of his that. pocket, you know? Raise your taxes first, then we'll think about it. That just infuriated me when I read that, that this little rich guy sitting in the U.N. who's never had a bill and paid, worry about paying in his life is sitting there on behalf of all Americans and, and Europeans stating, yes, we want you to raise our taxes to pay for the destruction you just caused in, the, in, in Southern Asia. Yeah, and I wonder how much of the $10 million that Coffee Amin took in bribes from Saddam went into his pocket. Yeah, I mean, it just it goes from one insanity to the next. Uh, we'll, we'll take the caller call. now, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Dean? Oh, hi, Jerry. Dean. Go ahead, Stephen, and uh, you can put him on. Dean, you're up. Oh, okay, great. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Pastor Harry. Hello, Dean. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Happy New Year to both of you. 
Oh, happy new year to you. Oh, sorry, I can't hear Dean too Yeah, can you, can you like, yell? How's this? <laughs> That's good. That's good, Dean. <laughs> yeah, okay. The reason I called in because uh, I was having a, uh, just a really, really rough time. Uh, there's, uh, this thing, can you hear me fast, Harry? Yeah. Yes, yeah, just okay. have to shout at the devil. That's yeah, because this is radio and you just got to shout. Okay. Yeah, I was having a problem with, um, you know, just this synarchy, uh, where you have, uh, the one side, the Illuminati saying, you know, one thing and then also playing the other side. And, uh, especially with the, you know, the neocon talk shows, it just drives me crazy. Um, now, my solution to it is for me, what I feel I'm led to do is just to, you know, go, go out there into the, uh, the square, travel around the country, just in one, um, finances allow me to do that. And, uh, just, just speak the truth until they, you know, unfortunately, eventually lock me up or kill me or both. Um, do you, do you have anything that, you know, someone who can do, you know, like that or something else, you know, to just counteract these lies? Because they play both sides and I have to say that they are masters at it. And it just, it's literally driving me crazy. I, I've got to, you know, I've got to pray and fast just to be able to deal with it. Well, you know because what, when the Lord leads you sides. and He stands you up to take action, He will protect you. It is when people walk away from His protection and anointing and are doing things He hasn't called them to do that they get uh, in trouble for it. That, that's very true because if you look at Jesus' ministry, many times people wanted to kill him or throw him off a cliff, and God protected him till his time was to go to the cross. So when we're in God's will and doing what he wants, he will protect us. Yeah, and so what you have to do is, is just ask him, seek him for what he wants you to do. He may lead you right to the, you know, uh, the corner in the middle of town, and then somebody else might try to do the same thing, and then they would get arrested and in trouble. When the Lord leads you, he'll protect you. Dean, Dean, what exactly do you want to tell people? Well, the the conspiracy is so massive and so large, you know, it, it just seems to me that the problem is that it, the people just don't know the basic problem of how it's been going on for 6,000 years and what the situation is. And basically, from my situation, I just want to bring them up to date from just a, initially a secular level to let them know about the Illuminati and, and that alone because it's sort of like you have to give them milk before they can eat solid food. Yeah. Because right now, when you try to talk to them about anything, I realize I can't because they don't, there are people actually walking around that don't even understand that there's a problem. That yeah. They, well, so, yeah, fine, that the the Christian, person, you, know, you know, that everything is just okay. And, you know, it's sort of like the head of a, you know, insanity uh, clinic trying to talk reason and intellectually to the inmates. You can't do it. That's right. Okay, uh, we're going we're gonna to be going on a break here, Dean. So thank you for calling in. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you, Pat. Okay, we'll address your call when we come back, Dean. Yeah, you might want to call back in in about five or ten minutes. Uh, we're going to be going uh, the second hour, folks. We're going to take a five-minute break. And uh, don't forget, we will be on for another hour now. We'll be back in about five minutes, and we're going to pick up where we left off. And we'll see you back in about five minutes. Do you know where the 78 potential?